Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got two things going on. First, it's the winner announcement for Patreon. If you're new to this channel, my Patreon supporters are good to me. I try to be good back to them at the end of the month once uh, Patreon has processed the payments for the next month. I do a random number generator search using Google's random number generator and I choose it. I tell it to go between the numbers of how many Patreon supporters I have, which is 46 this past month, and it picked number 19. So I go to patreon.com, take a look at my supporters, and I count down to the 19th one. And just so I don't say it wrong, where did I put it? I think it's CWGRB in Cincinnati. No, that's not right. Not in Cincinnati. CWGRB. If I'm wrong, uh, it'll be on the screen what the actual letters are. I think the gentleman's name is Charles. I've got a number of gentlemen named Charles that are Patreon supporters. You guys are great, even if your name's not Charles. <laughs> so thank you very much, Charles. I've emailed you and I've sent you a message on Patreon. Get back to me and tell me which of the knives or other things, like a flashlight, that I reviewed in the previous month, which one do you want to be yours? That's right, the winner gets to pick from almost everything that I reviewed in the previous month. I sometimes keep back one or two things that I'm gonna put in my permanent collection or that I'm gonna have for a while that I need for some experiment or something. But from the vast majority of what I reviewed in the previous month, the winner gets to choose and then I ask them to help me pay for like half the shipping, but I ship it to them no matter where they live. Every single month, every Patreon supporter gets a chance to win a knife. That's like, if there's 46 guys, 12 chances, them's good odds. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. If you want to choose to support Patreon, no, no, don't support Patreon. If you want to choose to support Canadian Cutting Edge through Patreon, I would appreciate it very much. There's other benefits as well, such as I'm going to tell you guys the next time I've got a knife sale, which is in just a few days, uh, you guys get 48 hours access to the sale before any of the other viewers and subs subscribers get at it. So that's a huge deal. And if you're not a Patreon supporter of the channel, sorry, but usually about two thirds of the stuff ends up being sold before it's open to the public. It's just the way it goes. I've got to be nice to the guys that are being nice to me. The other thing that we're here for is an unboxing. I've got some more knives that I ordered from White Mountain Knives. That's in the United States of America. I've ordered over 200 knives from them. Over half of those are flipper knives. And yes, they come into Canada, no problem. Even though it says knives right there on the box. But he ships discreetly. He doesn't use knives in the name of the business or anything. And I don't know how it gets past everybody, but Every single time I order from them, they come through and they get to me in very good time. This took just over two weeks, a little less than three weeks for this order to get to me. So if you are in Canada and you're looking for a place that you want to get knives at a good price, White Mountain Knives, 10% off with coupon code CCE, and you get some really good stuff. If you want to stick to Canada, go to IntegrityKnives.com. That's a Canadian knife store that's opened in Ontario, and you can get 10% off there as well with coupon code CCE. But you have to pay Ontario sales tax, 13%. White Mountain Knives, zero sales tax. Shipping subsidized by White Mountain Knives, very economical, cheaper than any shipping I've had from a knife store in Canada. Yeah. There's reasons why I like White Mountain Knives. He does sell to me at a discount, uh, but certainly not for free and uh, not at a loss either. I wouldn't expect that from him anyways. So let's go to the tabletop and see what we've got here. I think you'll be interested. So I uh, bought this uh, Cold Steel Bush Ranger light. Sorry, the light's kind of bad back here. It'll look better once I've got this box open. I bought this from White Mountain Knives as well. They've got them for a pretty good price. I'm assuming they're still in stock. So uh, let's close this guy up. I'll be reviewing this within March. At least I plan to have it reviewed in March. We've got 
these guys. I've never had these before from White Mountain Knives. I totally hate them. So let me go get a plastic bag so I can keep these cleaned up. So you're going to find out that most of this unboxing is of Tucson knives. I don't know. I've really gotten into Tucson knives. And at White Mountain Knives, they have the best prices anywhere. And then you get 10% off again. The only issue with White Mountain Knives and Tucson blades is they run out very, very quickly. So the smartest thing to do is go look at their inventory, see what they got in their stores. And you're going to find out most of it's going to say that they're sold out but there's a remind me button it's orange with white letters in it you put your email address above it you click it and you'll get an email when it's back in stock but once you do get that email you got to act quick because they're going to sell out quick as well i'm assuming this is ts162 d2 steel and it's leamy now i've forgotten exactly what it looks like but I mostly get the more budget Tucson knives. I'd like to get more expensive Tucson knives, of course, but my own budget is also limited. I need to get a rag because I forgot, right? Tucson likes to oil their knives. So I've got a blue shop towel that I'm going to use to uh, wipe down everything that I unbox here. This is a nice coarse green micarta look at that isn't that beautiful we've got a flipper here and there's a little hole under there yeah i'll be able to flick it open using that i'm not a good under flicker some guys can make these guys just fly out make the blades just just sing i'm not that good at that but uh just the regular flipper yep so this is a really cool blade it looks a bit like a spear point style blade thumb rest with jimping d2 steel it says d2 right there this is a wong design nicely milled g10 very skeletonized handle it's one of their uh, out of the box typical pocket clips which i'm not that fond of but it's not terrible and high-end screws flat screws for the body screws i like that big sharpener's toil maybe a little bigger than i'd like it to be because the uh you're losing a bunch of cutting edge right there lots of belly and a decent tip for piercing nice swedge there nice little sort of fuller with a hole that's a good looking knife I like that. And the grip. Yeah, the grip's pretty comfortable. All right. I won't be able to put them all on the screen at the same time, so I'll just put it to the side here. And next we have... It's a little bit out of focus because of the range of the lens. I am ordering, or I have ordered, a proper uh, macro lens, which should help me with my videos. TS-89 D2 G10. So TS-89 means that it's a knife design from a while back. But uh, I wasn't going to get it until I saw that it doesn't have one of their cheap old pocket clips. One of the older styles even than the one we just saw. It's got a titanium pocket clip. Maybe it's steel. I think it's I think it said titanium. I don't remember exactly. But see right there. Look at that pocket clip. It's a nice clean looking pocket clip. It looks like it's one side only because it looks like the uh, G10 has been milled behind the clip. So we've got a flipper right there. Look at that blade. That is definitely a piercing blade we've got another fuller again a swedge across the top d2 steel again g10 handle scales there is skeletonizing in there it's a little bit of dirt in the pivot screw there another wong design 
actually fairly comfortable. I think I would champ for right away. I could feel that the G10, the edges here on the index and middle finger grips, it's a little bit sharp there, but that's easy to smooth out. It's more comfortable in the left hand, which is very, very often on knives, especially liner locks. They're more comfortable in the left hand because the way they remove steel here to have access to the liner lock release is just more comfortable in the left hand than it is in the right hand. So you righties, you just don't know what you're missing. You should try to become left-handed. I grew up left-handed. I just became quite ambidextrous because my three older brothers are all right-handed and I got the hand-me-downs from them. <laughs> so I had to learn to, uh, you know, catch a baseball the way they did, which means I had to learn to throw a baseball the way they did because I couldn't switch hands. That would make the game go really slowly, wouldn't it? Here's another older version. This is the TS-76 G10 Up, it says. So yeah, like their new, their new styles are into the 300s for their uh, naming scheme. And some of their older knives are still a very good bet, a very good idea. They look good, they function well. And they're worth checking out. Again, D2 steel. This one's a night morning design. Frame lock. Uh, G10 on this side. And I'll find out if that's uh, steel or titanium or whatever. It's got that same pocket clip that we saw before over here on this guy. It's an okay pocket clip. Nice thin cutout lines there. Good action. A little bit slippery because of the oil, but I'll dry it off. It's a really good thing that they oil their their blades, especially D2. D2 is not a stainless steel. I get a lot of newbies on my channel, guys that are new to the knife hobby, so they don't always know what every steel is. So sometimes I talk as if you guys don't know a thing. I like to give new guys into the knife hobby a comfortable, easy way for them to get involved and to get to be able to understand what's going on. So yeah, that's kind of neat. We've got a lanyard loop thing back here. Perfect placement for that. Interesting. One thing that's very common on two sun knives is their sharpness choils are never too small. Well, I shouldn't say never, but it's very uncommon that they're, uh, they're too small. This is the TS-201. I got a pile of boxes to clean up soon. This is a bright blue knife. But the factory is starting to double bag everything. Interesting. Again, this is oily. Very oily. I am quite a fan of harpoon style blades. So this is a harpoon style blade. There's actually a tiny bit of a recurve in here too. Don't let recurve scare you. Recurve blades are not hard to sharp. Sharp end, contrary to popular opinion. You just need the right equipment. I've got a video on uh, sharpening recurve blades. Yeah, there's a lot of oil on this guy. This is G10, blue G10 with carbon fiber laminate on the top with all that milling through it to give it those uh, outstanding colors. There's no skeletonizing in there. It's got that same pocket clip again. Yeah, this one is even more so, more comfortable in the left hand because look at how much this cutout is on this side. Lots of access to the steel which means in the right hand, at least for me, it's not as comfortable. But in the left hand, it's very comfortable. Oh, and this one is a rattlesnake design. I think I've had a knife from that designer before. A 
and good detents. Two sun knives usually have good detents. And finally, the TS-115 with D2 steel. I like that these are getting the uh, labels on them at least. I really wish Two Sun would name their knives. Now this is a very interesting G10 pattern. It's milled through, they've got tiny little vents milled right through it there on both sides. And then you've got these two uh, crossing, you know, twirling lines. Again, a flipper. Long blade, fuller that goes right out the end. Oh, what's this guy's name? Oh, I'm so good at, good. I'm so good at forgetting people's names. I've had this designer before. You've got a logo that looks like a shield with a tree inside it, and then the K in the one corner, and an E in the other corner. I'll have the name on the screen who this designer is. Again, the sharpener's toil is plenty big, maybe even a little too big. And we've got this pocket clip again. Some of these older knives probably were initially made with a different pocket clip. They're skeletonizing in there. There's no lanyard hole on this one. So we've got a lanyard hole here. We've got a lanyard hole here. We've got a lanyard pin there. We've got a lanyard hole on this one. But this last one that's really funky, there's no lanyard option. I guess you could tie off on the end of the pocket clip if you really wanted to. It's a nice clip point blade right there. Two stage clip. It goes straight and then it takes another angle change right there. Like I said, D2 steel. I will be ordering some more stuff from White Mountain Knives quite soon. This is enough Two Sun Knives probably to take me into, you know, the middle of the summer. The one other knife that we've got to look at today is this. Sanren Mew. I like Sanren Mew. They're my favorite knife company of all time. Uh, they started an SRM branding recently in the last couple of years. This paper is very thin, and uh, that's why it says SRM in these triangles right here, which is Sanren Mew. SRM, SRM, stay ready for more. There we go. Now the box is opening up. Foam in there. Oh, wow. They've got a utility multifunction shovel, GC01. 22 features, it says. I guess that's one way to advertise. This is a very new knife. They've got a couple even newer ones. This is a front flipper. Oh, a little bit of grease in there. Right here on the flipper. Yeah. That's grease instead of oil. And access lock. Oh yeah, that flips open very nicely. That's a nice looking access lock too. I'll have to get used to flicking it out, but a front flipper access lock. You don't see that very often. D2 steel, couple holes in here, swedge. I think this is a bead blast finish. One thing I don't prefer from San Ramu is uh, they've been liking to write on the bevels of their knives. What I don't dislike too much is that it's not really dark. But you've got SRM in a triangle here, and then you've got the letters SRM there, sort of like on the box where you had both, which is kind of redundant. You just don't need that much branding. It's overbranding, in my opinion. And then you get the SRM here again. Model number, serial number, each knife is serialized. This is number five. Which means that White Mountain Knives got the first batch of these knives in from anyone. I'm sure there's stock in still of this. Uh, G10, it's uh, 
got steel. The steel is around this blue section here. So it comes up and it's thin and it comes back down to here. And then this section here, it's like it's skeletonized. There's no liner there. G10 is very strong, so that's a fine way to make the handle. It's This is very light. Let's see if I have the access lock out. Yeah, I think there's that grease in there. It really looks like it's got that grease film in there. I don't like to take access lock knives apart, but after I've done the review, I think I'm going to take this thing apart and put some light oil in there, try to get the grease out of there. Don't like grease. It's got a deep carry clip with flush screws, which I kind of like, but the clip isn't all the way right at the end. But I like it how small it is. Lanyard hole back here with the backspacer, full backspacer, which I actually like. Hmm. There you go. Senren Mew. SRM knives. Check them out. White Mountain Knives only recently got into SRM knives and Senren Mew knives, but uh, they are a good buy there. And if you're in Canada, that's the place to go. There's a lot of knife stores in the U.S. that no longer ship to Canada at all, which I guess that means more business for White Mountain Knives, eh? Yeah, this is getting good. I like this front flipper. It's easy to get used to. As I get more used to it, it'll get a little more elegant, but this is a very light knife again. We've got a couple very nice light knives. Wait a minute, Bandit, just wait. So thank you so much for watching my video. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Use my links and coupon codes listed down below the video in order to save money and tell your friends. Remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.